You might as well go into the comments right now and write duh because these tests are going to be pretty predictable. Mostly this video shows how far we've come in just three years to get more and more insane numbers with each new generation of Apple Silicon. First I'll do a large Xcode build, then I'll do a huge Xcode build and we'll see how the development environment behaves in a more realistic daily scenario as well and under load. This is my daily driver. It's a 16 inch M2 Max MacBook Pro. And this is the new M3 Max MacBook Pro. But I also have a surprise. <laughs> I sold this machine a while ago, but this used to be, what the heck is? This used to be a $4,000 machine. That's now on Amazon for $800. And it comes renewed with very not genuine parts, as you can see. A little disappointing there, but hopefully the machine is still a MacBook Pro. <laughs> And indeed it is with some kind of a sticker on it. This is the last Intel MacBook Pro. I got it because some of the tests have changed and I want to make sure we have the most up-to-date information for those people that are still on an Intel box to see if it's worth for them to upgrade to any of these other machines. The first thing I'm going to do is run a pretty decently sized Xcode build, which is called Xcode Benchmark. You've seen me do this on the channel before. I actually did it with a similar machine to this one a couple years ago. The test has changed quite a bit for Xcode 15. It has new dependencies in it. So any kind of test results you've seen before now are going to be slightly different. So keep that in mind. And I've got Schwarzenegger 2.0 ready to go. This will synchronize the execution when I push this big red button. And it looks like we're ready to go. Let's do this. I'm going to link this benchmark down below, which has other results so you can compare. And according to the benchmark, you're not supposed to have anything else running on the machine. But we also know that as developers, we often have lots of things running on our machine. So I'm going to do more of a real world test after that too. Low battery. Ah, come on. Ugh. Ah. Also, there's one more gotcha with the Intel machine. The Apple Silicon machines don't need to be plugged in. They can utilize full high power mode, which is what I have it set to, without any performance degradation. But the Intel MacBook needs to be plugged in in order to get the maximum performance out of it. So I'm gonna rerun that test. The initial result is in and the M3 Max is killing it with 79.48 seconds, 107.34 seconds on the M2 Max and 318 seconds on the Intel MacBook Pro. This time I want to check a few stats while the code is running and that Intel machine is going to be plugged in. Boom. While this one is in progress, let's keep an eye on the temperatures. So right now the fans on the Intel machine are around 2000 RPM. And the fans are completely off on the Apple Silicon machines. Here's the Intel machine starting to warm up a bit and the fans are kicking up to over 3000 RPM. Now you can see how the temperatures are affecting each part of this machine. Here's the CPU, the GPU is staying pretty decent temperature and then the battery is staying nice and cool which is actually really good. So really the biggest thing heating up is that CPU. Fans are at 4200 now and you can hear it. On the M2 Max we're at 1400 RPM for the fans. 76 degrees this thing is finished by the way it's a hundred seconds but not as fast as the m3 max that one's been done it took 69 seconds to finish this one the fastest time i've ever seen the fans did spin up here we're at 1600 rpm now and this thing has been done for a few seconds we're cooling down now slowing down but we didn't even have a chance to hit 100 degrees here intel machine not quite done yet now while we're waiting for the intel machine to complete that first time i'm just gonna run the silica machines again and just get their temps 33 degrees on the m2 max now the m3 max is allowed to go much higher you can see we're in the red here for the temperatures for the cpu itself but the chassis is remaining a nice cool 34 degrees that's good and we're at about 100 degrees here for the intel machine around 6,000 rpm now that's where that loud noise is coming from chassis 47 degrees. We all remember that 2018 debacle where the body was so hot. This is pretty close to that. Not quite, but pretty close. And guess what? The M3 Max machine is finished again at 69. M2 Max is finished at 100. We're seeing consistent numbers and we're still waiting for that run for the Intel machine, which is now done 286 seconds. 
Going from the M2 Max to the M3 Max, we're already seeing quite a performance boost. Of course, if you're in an Intel machine, you're gonna see huge boosts across the board, going to M1, M2, and now M3. All that still holds up. Next, I'm gonna build WebKit. It takes probably over 10 minutes to even download this thing from GitHub. It's gonna be a huge build. This is not really a race. We got Schwarzenegger here just for fun, but I wonder how much of an improvement this is gonna be for larger projects with Apple Silicon over the Intel machine, and also the new M3 Max over my own M2 Max, which is already a pretty nice machine. Let's do it. Boom. <laughs> well, this is pretty unbelievable. Uh, the M3 Max just finished this in 10 minutes, just over 10 minutes, which is a time that I've never seen before. M2 Max still running. Intel machine still running. Okay, M2 Max is done 14 minutes and 53 seconds respectable time. I would say that that's a pretty decent savings though from the M2 Max to the M3 Max. If I had to build WebKit locally every day, not that they do, they probably have a CI process that does this, but still, this is a nice bump. Uh, you ready for this? The Intel box finished in 42 minutes. That's actually faster than I thought it would be. I still get comments and messages. Is it really worth upgrading from Intel? to Apple Silicon? And the answer is yes, it is. We've built WebKit, now let's launch it to see how long that takes. Here's where I could have really used Schwarzenegger, but oh well. Okay, don't know which one of those finished first. You can tell in the video, but this one definitely finished last. These two were really close though. Now let's say I was working on a mobile project and I wanted to launch the iOS simulator. Something we commonly do in the mobile world, right? How long would that take? Watch the screen. I'm gonna try to press these as fast as possible. Okay. This one started first, the M2 Max. There was probably a half a second between my presses there. Schwarzenegger, I need you. These two are already running. That one is still thinking about running. There's the Apple logo and there we go. Not a huge difference between the Apple Silicon varieties, M2 Max versus M3 Max. Huge difference going from Intel. I've charged up all the batteries to 100% and now is the moment of truth where I unplug the Intel MacBook because from now on we're gonna see how much battery is left after I do my tasks. I also have a few things running. On each one of these machines I have a couple of instances of VS Code, I have the terminal open, I have 15 tabs in Chrome and a couple of tabs in Safari. I'm also gonna pop open Xcode because we're gonna need that. The Intel machine is already almost at 3000 RPM at 70 degrees. Power being used is 17 to 20 watts, and the thermal status is moderately elevated. Thermal status on the two Apple Silicon machines is nominal, so not much going on there. I'm running the benchmark one more time on all these machines while all that stuff is going on. Intel machine is starting to cook a little bit. Figure of speech, folks. Figure of speech. It's not actually cooking, but it is reaching 100 degrees, 4100 RPM, and we've got almost full CPU utilization here. Also, the package power is 47 watts. Full utilization on the M2 Max, 30 to 35 watts on uh, the M2, and also 30 to, wow, 54 watts on the M3 Max? The fan on the M3 is really spinning up. The two loudest machines here are actually the Intel machine and the M3 Max machine, not the M2 Max for some reason. That is a lot of power being used by the M3 Max, more than I expected to see. It's got spikes up to 58 watts. Here we've got 41 watts maximum on the M2 Max and a peak of 90 watts on the Intel machine. I've said before that macOS's memory management is really impressive. On the M2 Max, we got 17 gigabytes used, almost a gig of swap. A lot of that is in cache, so it's not active RAM that's being used. It's just there just in case. Same thing with the M3 Max, a lot less swap here, but we've got 18 gigabytes of cache and only nine gigabytes of cache on the Intel machine, but there isn't much swapping going on. And we're finally done. And guess what? The Intel machine was affected mostly by the fact that it's unplugged. We saw the difference in plugged and unplugged, but not so much with everything else running on the machine. We got a total of 314 seconds on the Intel machine. The M2 Max actually does better, 99 seconds. And the M3 Max does about the same, 69 seconds. It really likes that 69 figure. Write your comments down below. Now I ran the Xcode build two times on the M2 Max and the M3 Max while the Intel machine was building. So the Intel machine finished this once. Let's see the battery that's left on it. <sighs> 
This was only a couple of minutes, folks. A couple of minutes. And look, the battery on the Intel machine is down to 84%. Now, it's not a new battery, but good luck finding an Intel machine with a new battery at this point. And after this test, the M2 Max is down to 97%, but the M3 Max is still at 100%. Now, this simulates kind of a human-centric approach to things. So when you're using your machine, you're only really doing one thing at a time as the user. But what if you were running some kind of task in the background, something really intense? What happens to the machine at that? That point let's use a tool called system load i'll leave a link to this down below not sponsored i just found it it's pretty cool so now i can load up the processors i can select how many processors and take a look at this up here as i'm increasing the number of processors i'm gonna do all 12 here and additional load to generate 100 percent you know what that's a bit much let's go to 50 percent right now the machine is basically not doing anything but you can see that the performance cores are really being used and so are the efficiency cores here so let's go up to 16 processors on the m3 and we're going to go to 16 processors on the intel machine as well remember the intel machine only has really eight processors but it's hyper threaded so the system sees it as two let's do this build one more time while all that is happening okay wow a couple things here that are really crazy the m3 max with all that processor being used up finished it only four seconds slower at 73 seconds but the m2 max was severely affected by this 379 seconds for this build it was worse than the Intel MacBook, which finished at 346 seconds. But the Intel MacBook has another problem. We're down to 26% of battery after just, what is it, like 10 minutes? 10 minutes. 89% of battery on the M2 Max, and we're at 96 on the M3 Max. Let's pop open Xcode. We're gonna create a brand new project, an iOS app called, I'm really creative, so I'm gonna call it Proj1, a Swift app. Let's go. As far as the creation of the project, I don't see much degradation here in the performance of that, but let's run it and see what happens. The sim popped up pretty quickly this time on all three machines. M2 Max finished first with the deployment of the app, popped up the app, that one popped up the app immediately, the M3 Max, with the label already populated. We're still waiting on the label to be populated in these two machines, Intel and M2 Max. An Intel machine actually populates the content first. My M2 Max has been working hard, apparently. There we go. If you're wondering about any kind of usability or lag or navigating code, did try a little bit of that and didn't see any issues or severe lag in any one of these machines. So the biggest drawback to the Intel machine, well, you can probably hear one of them right now. The loud noise, it's at 6,000 RPM right now and 81 degrees Celsius. The body temperature is at 45 degrees. 39 here on the M2 Max and 34 on the M3 Max. The ridiculous battery life on the Intel machine, 26% left after just about 15 minutes of use, 85% left on the M2 Max, and 94 left on the M3 Max machine. We're seeing pretty significant improvements with the M3 Max, but the M2 Max is still a pretty decent machine here. Will I be upgrading to the M3 Max? Yes, I will, but mostly because I'm gonna get a lot of benefits as a video creator. I also dabble in machine learning, so I'm gonna see if the M3 Max helps out in that situation as well. More videos to come on that. If you're looking for something other than Xcode, first of all, thank you for watching this video, but there will be other videos on other developer related topics and if you want to see my recommendations about the m3 family of machines see this video right over here for general software development topics and i'll see you in the next one